from the culture of the American South, where roots hold stories, comes a natural deodorant inspired by generations of wisdom. Introducing Root Work, the all-natural foundational Black American-based deodorant infused with the magic of High John the Conqueror root. Our unique blend enriched with this legendary root offers 24-hour protection rooted in the power of nature. Embrace this deodorant that celebrates culture, history, and your well-being. Unlock the magic of root work today. Experience the pure essence of nature. Visit rootworkstyle.com and make the switch to a healthier cultural choice. Come down to the Spring Fever Comedy Showcase at the Hidden History Museum on Saturday, April 13th, 2024 at 7 p.m. Get ready to group to great music, indulge in complimentary dinners and drinks, and brace yourself for an uproarious comedy extravaganza. Featuring the comedic talents of Tori Hart, Ron G, comedian CP, and many others, with dynamic boasting by Dwan B and Tariq. Don't miss out! RSVP now at HiddenHistoryMuseum.com. That's HiddenHistoryMuseum.com. Yo, what's going on? Welcome to another episode of Tariq Radio. And I am your gracious host. I am Tariq Nasheed, ready to chop up game. And we're live and direct right now, ladies and gentlemen. So let everybody know that we're live right now, ladies and gentlemen. Today's show is brought to you by our sister, D. Tubman. Shout out to D. Tubman. She want to thank everybody for their support during her difficult time and she wants to get everybody to donate to Micah Logan's GoFundMe in her honor. All right. So go to GoFundMe and donate to Micah Logan's GoFundMe. Also, today's show is brought to you by a new book called The Grassy Knoll. It's a fictitious account of the JFK assassination. The story revolves around George McKinney, a loyal FBA soldier to the United States Army. Until one day, he is betrayed and left for dead. So you better read the rest of this story because it's deep. Um, it's by our good brother, author Tyrus McKnight. Get the book right now at Amazon Kindle. Well, it's going to be available April 12th. So check that out. The book is called The Grassy Knoll. So family, we're going to get into OJ. Everybody is talking about the passing of OJ Simpson, the life of a living legend. We're going to talk about our legendary FBA brother and all the stuff he went through. We're going to get deep with it, but we're going to take a real quick commercial break, ladies and gentlemen. So don't you move a muscle because we will be right back, ladies and gentlemen, right here on Tariq Radio. Here we go. Listen up, squares. You need to get the legendary book on game, The Art of Mackin, by author Tariq King Flex Nasheed. Available on Amazon right now. Can you dig it? This book has been a bestseller for 20 years, Jack. And the New York Times called it a classic. That means it's out of sight. So this book ain't for no lames who ain't trying to learn the game. Jive turkeys. So if you're ready to stop slacking in your macking, get the Art of Macking book on Amazon and Barnes & Noble right now. Sucker. Rated PG. That stands for plenty of game. Jive chumps. Are you ready to unlock the secret to flawless, radiant skin? Then look no further than Even Melanin. It's formulated especially for melanated skin. Say goodbye to hyperpigmentation, signs of aging, acne, eczema, and other sensitivity problems. Even Melanin is your ticket to a flawless complexion, helping you even your melanin to the beautiful brown that God intended. So for your ticket to a flawless complexion, to even your melanin to the brown that you're supposed to have, go to Even Melanin. 
evenmelanin.com. That's evenmelanin.com. Check out Black Power for Kids. It's the first of its kind memory matching card learning experience for us by us. It's a great collection. It has a bunch of our black heroes and icons and greats, and you can teach your children while empowering them at the same time. It's fun, educational, and empowering. So go to blackpowerforkids.com to order your own learning experience today. That's blackpowerforkids.com. What's up, kid folks and loved ones? This is your main man, Slink Johnson, BKA Black Jesus, Black Jesus, letting y'all know about Skyber, the customizable tipping app. Skyber's the only app willing to pay out reparations. Check it. The first FBA to use Skyber after hearing this gets $100. Whoever uses it afterwards can still get tangibles forwarded to their accounts. Ain't no law against companies helping with reparations, right? Let's stop all these coon babbling trends and let's set a trend to help FBA stack paper. Search Skyber app on Google Play or the App Store for more details. Big ups to Diplo, Diplo. System D128, DJ J Mob, and a special, special shout out to Lork D, to Lork, aka Dave Ski, for making it happen. Skyber app, y'all. Skyber.org. Family, are you tired of going from site to site looking for children's books? Go to drbirdiebooks.com where we already have over 100 children's ebooks. 100 children's ebooks? That's going to cost a few hundred dollars. No, our ebooks start as low as $347 for a pack of 10 unique children's books. That's D R B I R D Y B O O K S dot com. Dr. Birdie Books. Bro, stop playing and start spraying. Leave a op on the ground where you stand. At all costs, yeah, make sure you protect it. Old goon juice, the formula been tested. You can defend yourself if you find that you need a little help. Gotta stay ready, ain't no love in the street. Pepper spray straight to the face, make them get weak. Get it at ogoonjuice.com. If they think you slipping, then tell them to come get them some. If you packing this, you won't be lacking. But shot to the eye in them problems you having. Maximal strip hit them haters on ground. So you can feel free when you out in the town. Ogoon Juice and don't forget a shirt, man. You gotta stay ready. That evil on lurk. Yeah. Time to tap in to the FBA vibes of Tariq Nasheed. Sprinkling that magic Mojara flavor all over the airwaves. Hey! Shut up all that damn noise. This ain't Soul Train. On Tariq Radio. Radio. Say it again. Say something else. Oh! Say something else. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Tariq Nasheed. Glad to have y'all in here, ladies and gentlemen. Glad to have you in the building. We are in here. We're going to chop up some heavy game. How's my sound, everybody? Is my sound good? Am I sounding good, ladies and gentlemen? I want to make sure my sound is good. Good family. We are in here tonight. In fact, you know what? Let me do this. Let me hop on camera with y'all. Bam, here I am. Let me do that. Let me just hop on camera. Let me just do that real quick. All right, here I am. And I'm here, ready to do what I do, and that's chop up great game with the family, man. I'm glad to have y'all tuning in. The sound is good. The the sound is good. Everything is good. Everything sounds great. Man, there's a lot we got to talk about on this evening's broadcast about OJ. A lot we got to discuss. Before I get there, got to remind everybody (coughs) <coughs> Still a little coffee there. <coughs> Excuse me. The movie microphone check will be in theaters next month. Go to microphonecheck.com to get your tickets. Microphonecheck.com. We got um showings in Los Angeles. Dallas, Detroit, New Orleans, Atlanta, D.C., Chicago, Oakland, and uh, New York. So go to microphonecheck.com. Oh, yeah, also um, Colorado, Denver, Colorado, Indianapolis. We got tickets there. So go to um, microphone check and get your tickets. Let me say this. Somebody, I did a live last night. 
And the New York show is going to be insane. It's going to be a lot of people there. The first showing is almost sold out, if it's not sold out yet. And that's like a damn near 500-seater. That's That venue sits like 500 people. The first showing is almost sold out. The second showing is going to be sold out, too. We still got a month left. So you got your ticket for D.C.? Looks like all of them are going to be sold out, but New York just sold out the fastest. New York is very excited about the film. And I'm going to be at the one in New York, too, by the way. I'm going to be at the one here in L.A., and I'm going to be at the one in New York. The one in L.A. is going to be Thursday the 23rd. The New York one is going to be the 25th. So that's Memorial Day weekend, so it's going to be popping. And um, I had somebody call last night in my live broadcast, and... Um, I, he said something, and I, you know, I respect people's support, but I got to disagree with what the guy kind of low-key issued a threat to somebody. <laughs> I don't want that. The guy called up like, yeah, man, the Bronx, yeah, we coming through, and a lot of people from the Bronx are coming. A lot of folks from the Bronx are going to be there. The Bronx is going to be in the building. And the Bronx, the brothers and sisters in the Bronx, they feel a certain way about people running around here trying to remix the narrative in the history, right? Some people feel a certain way about that. And um, brother called up last night. He's like, man, that Derek Cologne better not be in there, man. It's going to be a problem. Oh, no, 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 no. No, no, no. Don't want to do that. I want to say this just for the record. Everybody is welcome. Derek Cologne is welcome. All of his people are welcome. Everybody's welcome to come on to the movie screening, okay? Everybody's welcome. Everybody's going to be very safe. We're going to have a great night of entertainment. It's going to be a very good night, all right? So I just want to say that. I just want to reiterate that. Um, everybody's going to be good. <laughs> everybody's going to be safe. It's not going to be any problem. All right, we don't want we don't want that. I don't want it to be that. Um, and I understand people feel a certain way. People are very passionate about the history of um, you know their, their town, and you know. Um, but yeah, everybody can come through. Everybody can come through. It's not going to be no problem. I want the the movie premiere in New York is going to be um, May twenty fifth, Saturday, May twenty fifth. All right. So Derek Cologne, I know you're watching. I don't want Derek to start making videos talking about people are threatening him and all because Derek is very good at being a Karen. All right. Derek, I know you're listening. So you're very good at being a Karen. And, and you're going to be if you come on out because I know Derek wanted to come out and he wanted to sit with me. I'm like, well, I'm, I'm not Kevin Costner. I'm not going to I'm not going to be your bodyguard, but you you more than welcome to come and bring whoever you're going to bring. All right. Bring your people. Um um, and, and enjoy yourself. You know, people, we can respectfully disagree with certain people's narratives. You know, that that's fine. Uh-oh, what happened? What happened? Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh, what the hell happened? What the fuck happened? Uh-oh. What the hell happened? Whoa, shit. That's okay. Hold on, guys. What the hell happened? Hold on. Ugh. I don't know what happened, guys. Hold on, guys. I don't know what happened. Hold on. Y'all bear with me for a second. I had a technical difficulty going on here. Y'all, I don't know what went down. Y'all bear with me for a second. Let me um let me put this up real quick. So I'm I'm still chopping it up, guys. I don't know what happened to my camera. I don't I don't know what happened. Yeah, something weird just happened, ladies and gentlemen. I'm up here chopping it up with y'all, and then all of a sudden, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Y'all bear with me for a second. I don't know what the hell happened. What the fuck just happened? Okay, hold on. Y'all bear with me for a second. Let me see what's going on with my thing here. Uh, what the hell happened? Y'all bear with me. I'm here. I'm here. 
Just trying to figure this thing out, ladies and gentlemen, trying to figure it out. Uh, the hell happened? Okay. Da, 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 da. I don't know what this was. I don't know what happened. Uh, Yo, hold on. Cause yeah, my my light just went out. But um, you know what? Let me play a little a commercial again while I do my thing and get this together. Y'all rock with me for a minute. Let me play the microphone check trailer. Hold on. This is the 50th anniversary of hip hop, and we still have a lot of discrepancies as far as the origins of hip hop. A lot of claims: who did what? Who was the first this? Who was the this and that? And such and such. But at the end of the day, we need a definitive story, all right? And that story can only be told by the founders of this culture. Like everything was being driven and influenced by young, black, American culture. Like the slang, the style of dress, the initial uh, music that we chose. Look at uh, all the boroughs. You got, you know, money making Manhattan and money earning Mount Vernon and Crooklyn. The Bronx was the boogie down Bronx. We was partying up there. I am Coke LaRock, the first MC of hip hop. The first cat to pick the mic up. I introduced rapping to the turntables because when I came with it, nobody in the world was doing it. I'm right after Rudy Ray Moore. They want to come in the mix, they want to say, I was, we started. No, no you didn't. No you didn't. No you didn't. What can't be known as hip hop was solely an African American creation. What would you get out of some Jamaican toast? What is that? I've never heard of a rapper use a Jamaican toast or a Jamaican flu as a rhyme. I never heard of it, and I don't know where that myth came from. My name is Legendary Kane Trixie from the Bronx, BX from the West Side. I am the first break dancer. And that narrative that hip hop has had three founding fathers, that's been rolling for the last almost 30 years, which isn't true. You don't have just three people who created hip hop. Hip hop was created by a number of different people. I am the grandfather, the godfather of the graffiti culture. I am the first element of hip hop. The root of hip hop being Jamaican, absolutely false. My name is MC Shah Rock. I am a founding member of the MC slash rap culture. Cassette tapes was the internet of our time. It just traveled around by hand. Well, I know for a fact that the B-Boy stand started from the gods, the five percenters that would be at the jams back in the days who were acting as security. If they get the real truth of how it all was created, then so many lives would not be able to be in existence. Come on. Boom, there it is. I'm back. <laughs> there, I don't know what happened. All right, I'm back. I'm back. I'm good. We good. We good. We good. We good. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm back. I don't know what happened. I had a little technical glitch, but I'm, I'm here. So microphone check, man, you know, that trailer, two minute trailer, boy, it got people up in arms. Wait till y'all see two hours and 20 minutes of that. Wait till y'all see two hours and 20 minutes of that. Um, I can't wait to refute the lies. Oh man, I can't wait for you guys to see this movie. It is a phenomenal movie and I cannot wait for you guys to see this. This is gonna be so historic. This is gonna be historic, ladies and gentlemen, a historic film. Um, the lies are gonna stop. I, Fat Joe, you can come too. Fat Joe, you, you're, you're welcome to come on out and see it, brother. Oh, the production in this is so damn crisp. The production is so super duper crisp in this one. Speaking of Fat Joe, boy, some did you, they didn't call Fat Joe out for lying about something else. Lord, shout out to Fat Joe. I'm not trying to beat up on Fat Joe, but Kevin Durant has called Fat Joe out. Um, Kevin Durant, Fat Joe was on somebody's podcast talking about they ran Kevin Durant out from the Rucker, and Kevin was like, um, "No, that that didn't happen." Hold on. 
this um, right here. Let me play this in fair use for whatever podcast this is, fair use. So this Kevin Durant was like, that's a lie. Nothing but respect and love out there. I didn't feel safe, unsafe for one second. So Fat Joe was saying that Kevin Durant got ran, ran out. out. And he said, no, that's, that's not true. Hold on, hold on. You know, Kevin, De, Kevin Durant was, he scored like 82 points in, in the third quarter. Like they, he don't like me telling this story. They chased him out the rucker. Like they want to beat him up. <laughs> he whipped they ass so bad. That they wanted to literally beat him up out there. Like, it was just, and he was doing, like, almost like the Kate and Clark show. And he was, he was there boy. checking it out. Mixtape, boy. Yeah, yeah, that was mixtape was going Woo. Woo. I mean, from the other side of the court. I'm not talking about no, I remember that video. half court. Oh, oh, no, I'm not, I was there at the game. I'm not talking about half court. He was, they checked it out, passed it to him, and five guys would go like this, and he was hitting them. Water, 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 water. He scored, like, 80 points. I said, oh, wow. I was out there. They chased him into the truck. He had to go. And Kev said, nah, that didn't happen. Kevin Durant was like, "Um, nah, that didn't happen. And then some people, they started kind of posting some videos. Hold on. All right. And so people are posting videos. They're showing him love. So does that look like he's getting chased out? Huh? Yeah, hold on. I mean, that, I mean, he's not. They're showing him love. <clears throat> so yeah, they somebody provided video to show proof. Like, damn, nobody chased the dude out. All right, so, I don't know, Fat Joe, I don't know. Fat Joe just be saying stuff, man. Oh, Lord, 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 Lord. So that's why it's good to have receipts, man. That's why it's very good to have receipts. Yeah. Man. But I digress. So, uh, look, microphone check coming so we got all the receipts. Microphone check coming. Y'all got to go see microphone check. Now, listen, let's get into this OJ thing. OJ Simpson, legend. And speaking of New York, uh, Mr. C died too. Um, legendary DJ Mr. C. You know, the deaths, they come in three, so we don't know who's next. But Mr. C, he passed away. Brooklyn legend. He, um, I think he helped put Biggie on and... He was a DJ for Big Daddy Kane. And shout out to Kane. You know what? We're trying to get Kane, Big Daddy Kane, to perform at the Rally for Reparations. Y'all reach out to Kane. Um, his, I think his manager, Saquon, we, we kind of corresponded a little bit. We didn't hear back. Um, but y'all reach out to Kane for us. We want to get Kane, Big Daddy Kane, for the Rally for Reparations this June and Y'all throw some other names of people who we should get out there. We want to get some other acts to perform and we want to get, you know, professional acts because I, I said that I want to get some people to perform and a lot of people are sending me videos of their cousins and their uncles. No, no, no. Let me be, let me, let me say this. We're not doing a talent show. All right. We're not doing a talent show. We get performers. It's going to be established performers. We're not doing a talent show. All right, we, we're going to get established performers, people with name recognition, all right? So that's what we want. Y'all throw some names out here, but we want Kane. Um, I want a game, too. I reached out to Wack. Wack was supposed to call me back, too. So, but, um, yeah, we would like, I would like Kane. And it's just some other people. Somebody said, what about Hammer? <laughs> so... You know, we want some people to perform, but I digress. But uh, Mr. C, and you know, Mr. C had some run-ins. You know, Mr. C was, you know, he got called out there a few times on the on the bussy blade a, a few times. But you know, it is nobody nobody tripped on him. You know, he 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 started to kind of own up to his truth a little bit later on and say, hey, you know what? I got a hankering for bussy. That is what it is. And people said, all right, that's what it is. People said, that's what it is then. All right? Then, oh, you know what? 
Chingy would be good. Let me call Chingy's my dude too. Some, I'm, I'm, that's a great. Let me holler at my dude Chingy. Let's holler at Cameron. I would like to bring Cameron out. I'm gonna say bring Fat Joe. <laughs> The rally for reparations is June 15th. June 15th, the rally for reparations. <clears throat> Excuse me. June 15th. And you can make your, your contributions at rallyforreparations.com. But but let me say, okay, so we're getting into OJ Simpson. So OJ Simpson passed today. He um I think he had prostate cancer. He had prostate cancer, and um when he died. A lot of the white supremacists tried to get real celebratory. They tried to celebrate. Oh, that's karma. Oh, he's going to go to he burn in hell. And OJ is not going to nobody's hell. OJ was just fine. He's going to be all right. In heaven, he's going to be all right. OJ is a legend. OJ was a symbol for a lot of things. OJ was a very complicated man. Um, a lot of us proclaiming and, and pointing out OJ's innocence, a lot of people are trying to play the Jedi mind trick on us, talking about, well, OJ didn't even like black people. Why are you defending him? OJ said, I'm not black, I'm OJ. Uh, that's not going to work. It still doesn't matter. He's still innocent. No matter... How much cooning OJ did, and let's be real, OJ did a little cooning. OJ was on the coon train a little bit. Still innocent, though. All right? Yeah, he was chasing the white women and whoop-de-whoop. -whoop. Still innocent, though. Still a legend, though. A legend in many ways. All right, number one... OJ was a football legend, phenomenal football player, great actor, a good actor. He played a lot of campy roles. Um, spokesperson for Hertz. We remember him running through the airport in the Hertz commercials in the 1970s. And then when they tried to pin that bogus murder on him that he didn't commit, he became legendary because he hired um, legendary lawyers like our good brother Johnny Cochran, rest in power to not allow him to be railroaded like so many black people are railroaded. Because here's the thing. The OJ trial was important because we're so used to being railroaded. That trial, the first trial, the murder trial, was the most fair trial in this country. That was a very fair trial. And the white supremacists, they've been mad for over 30 years about that trial. They've been very upset about that trial because the white supremacists were not allowed to rig that trial in their favor like they're used to doing. That's why they're so butthurt over the first OJ trial. They like to be able to rig things in their favor. They weren't able to do that with the OJ trial for a few reasons. Number one, the OJ trial came on the heels of the Rodney King situation where we had to turn up out here in LA. So when the OJ trial came, and that was a very unjust verdict with the Rodney King situation, they did all the little white supremacist tricks. See, this is why I don't like the criticism they give the OJ jurors. They like to really analyze those OJ jurors and interview them and, well, look, they were biased. Well, they said this. They don't do that with these other jurors out here. You don't see them interviewing the Rodney King jurors. They don't interview jurors and put them on front street like that. They do that with the black jurors from the OJ trial to project their own bias onto them. The OJ trial was very fair. Number one, they weren't able to pull that whole, we're going to move it out to a white suburb jazz. See, that's what they did with Rodney King. When Rodney King got beat down by them white suburb, oh, why is, okay. When Rodney King, why is my camera going out, man? I might just have to do this without my camera. 
All right, let me just let me just do it. I don't know why my camera's going out. Uh, but I'm going to I'm going to rock out with my camera off for a minute. Let me do this. All right, let me just do this. All right, you guys can still hear me good. I don't know why my cam is tripping a little bit, but I'm going to rock out with you, family. I'm here with you. And I'm going to rock out with you, family. We're going to chop it up like we do. Don't worry, y'all. Give me a second. Let me get something together here. I'm going to just do my thing off camera for a minute. Let me just do it off camera for a little piece. And then we're going to rock out for a minute, all right? All right. So, like I said about OJ, like I said about OJ, the, the problem with OJ, well, the problem that the white supremacists had, and you guys can hear me good, right? Can y'all... um. Y'all give me a thumbs up if y'all can hear me. I don't know what, it, it's never done that before. I don't know why it's tripping like that. I don't know why my camera's tripping like that, family. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I said, they were not allowed to move that case up to um, Simi Valley into a white suburb like they did with Rodney King. They moved it to a, a part of LA County where it was heavy with white supremacists. And that's not too far from where I am now. Back in the 90s, 80s and 90s, that Simi Valley, Thousand Oaks, that, those places were damn near sundown towns. Those places were low-key sundown towns. So they deliberately moved it there knowing that the jurors that they picked were going to be team white supremacy. So they were used to skewing these jurors to their favor. And the streets of L.A. did not allow them to do that. The streets of L.A. said, nah, we're not doing that this time. We're not going to play that game. You're not going to um, move the trial out here and have this bogus nonsense going on. Yeah. And we had just turned up with the riots out here, the uprising, and people were still amped up. So they were like, hey, man, this case... Y'all better not pull no other janky stuff with this case. Let's not play no games. And our good brother, Johnny Cochran, OJ got Johnny, and Johnny was not a damn joke. Johnny made sure that the jurors were jurors of his peers. They didn't let them play the little racial game to get a, a whole jury pool full of suspected white supremacists. They didn't let that happen. And it was about to get cracking if they tried that nonsense out here. The streets were so ready. Man, the streets were so ready for the bullshit. They were just ready for the, the, the prosecutors to pull something slick. So the case went down. And there were a lot of lies being told at the time. We didn't really have the internet like that. So all of the information about the OJ trial, we got from the white media and it was very much slanted. They were on there lying their asses off. Everything was anti OJ and they understood something. The whole OJ did it narrative, that was the moneymaker. Telling the truth about what happened, what really happened, most likely, they knew that the killers would probably be people who were associated with um, Ron and Nicole and all of the other shysty people that they were around. Ron and Nicole, those people were surrounded by shysty people. They were surrounded by criminals. They never tell you this. This is why in the first trial, they didn't have none of Ron and Nicole's friends on the stand because they knew Johnny Cochran and those guys would eat them alive because most of their friends were criminals. Most of their friends and associates were criminals. So they didn't want to play that game by putting them on the stand. And the white media kept the drum beat of OJ did it. Look at this mountain of evidence. They would always put people on TV to talk about this mountain of evidence and whoop de whoop What no mountain of evidence. And they were downplaying the lead detective, who was Mark Furman, who was a card-carrying white supremacist. This dude was a hardcore white supremacist. And everybody in the police department knew he was a known white supremacist. 
and that was the lead detective. And they dug up some video of him talking to a screenwriter where this dude is using all types of anti-black racial epithets. He's talking genocidal about black people. He's talking about planning evidence, how he's how he has planted evidence on black people. You understand? So the Mark Furman guy, they for for the last 30 years, they've been trying to downplay Mark Furman. They've been trying to act like he's not a thing. Yeah, he was racist, but nah. The dominant white society, they're perfectly fine with excusing Mark Furman's racism because deep down, many of them have an affinity with Mark Furman. They have the same views as him. Let's keep it a buck. They have the same views as him. That's why they're so quick to dismiss that guy. Somebody, oh, somebody said, wait, do I serious believe he had nothing to do with the murders? Absolutely, Riri Jordan. No, he didn't have anything to do with the murders. No, he did not. And the case proved it. Why do you think they got him off? He got off because he was innocent. OJ didn't kill no damn body. And family, here's the thing. That Mark Furman clearly planted the damn evidence. Mark Furman, well, allegedly, I'll say that planted the evidence and at the time the LAPD was going through the Rampart scandal so there was corruption and LAPD was off the chain in the 90s my LA people know what I'm talking about all my LA people know what I'm talking about the, that whole Rampart thing it was a the LAPD was super scandalous at that time uh, planting evidence stealing stuff just covering up things they were super scandalous at the time and also with OJ, they wanted to use him as a symbol and a proxy for black people so they can get revenge for the LA riots because they didn't like the LA riots. They felt like they took an L with the LA riots because black people in LA gave the city in the, the state a billion dollar bill. The LA riots racked up a billion dollar bill for the city. And the PR was horrible for the city. It was no justice, no peace. If we don't get no justice, nobody's going to get no peace. We're going to make the whole city hot. So with this murder popping off, it tried to pin it on OJ because that's where the money was. You pin it on OJ, everybody was going to come up. You understand what I'm saying? The OJ thing, if you prosecute OJ, everybody was going to make a bag. Um, the Marsha Clarks and all of these people, the prosecutors were going to, oh man, rise to high office. If you get a high profile black man accused of killing a white woman and you get him locked up, oh, you about to be a gazillionaire. The book deals and all the, the, the political positions. Oh, you y'all were about to come up. Everybody was doing the Birdman hand rub. Oh, you, the, the cops would be promoted to police chief and then mayor. Oh, they were going to use this OJ thing. The OJ did it narrative was going to be the gravy train for everybody. And even during the trial, the book deals, everybody and their mama had a damn book deal. And that tainted a lot of the stuff with the jury because a lot of potential jurors, some of the jurors that they found trying to say, well, I saw OJ, many of these people were scratched from the jury. Well, not the jury, I'm sorry, but the witness stand because they were getting money. You had TV shows like Hard Copy. Some of y'all might not remember. One of the jurors who fake said she saw OJ driving in his Bronco. And they, they talked about that in the TV movie about how one quote unquote witness said she saw OJ speeding away in his Bronco, which was cap because that woman and she couldn't get on the stand because they found out Hard Copy gave her as $5,000. So she got on that stand, Johnny Cochran then would have told her a new asshole. So they didn't let her get on the stand because people were out here trying to cash out real early. They were saying stuff that the white media wanted them to hear. And 
What they didn't tell you, there were a lot of people who were corroborating OJ's um, um, narrative because this is the narrative. Here's the thing with the OJ situation. Somebody said Stephen A. Smith was just on Hannity. Was he campaigning for Butter Biscuits? Was Stephen A. campaigning? Because let me tell you something. The known bootlicks are out here campaigning for Butter Biscuits right now with this OJ thing. The bootlicks are out here campaigning right now, family. The bootlicks are doing their thing like Mark Lamont Schill. Did y'all see him? Let me let me show some of his tweets. Uh, OJ, what did he say? OJ Simpson is dead. Do not make him a hero or a martyr. So he's out here trying to audition for a job. OJ Simpson was an abusive liar who abandoned his community long before he killed two people in cold blood. His acquittal for murder was correct and necessary, was the correct and necessary result of a racial, racist criminal legal system. But he's still a monster, not a martyr. Shut up, dude. You do, you're auditioning for a job, Mark. You are auditioning for a job. Oh, sorry about that, guys. That's Mark auditioning, all right? You know that's what white folks want to hear. The only, pe- only black folks running around here talking about, oh, they did it. A Negro's trying to get a promotion at a white company somewhere. OJ didn't kill no damn body. They planted that evidence on OJ. Mark Furman was on tape admitting that he plants evidence on black people. He was a certified racist. Had it out for OJ, smashing the white women. They already had it out for OJ. Planted that evidence, not understanding that OJ had an alibi. That's why family, the timeline, they kept moving the timeline of the murders around so much. They had to move the timeline of the murders around so much, family. And they ended up having to give OJ, because of the way they planted the evidence and how OJ and other witnesses could corroborate OJ's whereabouts, they had to give OJ, they could only give him a 25-minute window based on his alibi. And that 25-minute window is... It's damn near impossible. You would have to be super damn Negro to um, do what they're saying OJ did. What they're saying, family, this is the narrative that OJ was planning a flight to uh, to Chicago to do a, an autograph signing or whatever. And that whole day, he just was, oh, he was so upset. Oh, he was so dejected and he went to his daughter's recital and he saw Nicole's family earlier that day and he was so angry. Oh, he was so mad and he was out of himself that day. Remember, they were saying that. But what happened was somebody had a camera that day and they filmed OJ earlier that day. Some random person and nobody knew this. This came out later and they actually filmed OJ interacting with his kids, he was happy and perfect and fine. <clears throat> OJ wasn't upset in any sense of the word. He wasn't mad or anything. So that lie fell flat. <clears throat> OJ wasn't upset whatsoever. So then they said, well, OJ just kind of snapped that night for no reason whatsoever. He just got up that night at 10 o'clock Realized he beat his wife two years earlier and said, hey, let me go kill her real quick before I catch this flight. So OJ put on a sweatsuit because Kato Kalen said OJ had on a sweatsuit. And according to the prosecutors, he OJ also had on some Bruno Mogli shoes, which are some dress shoes that don't go with no damn sweatsuit. Then he put on a skull cap. For what reason? I don't know. Why would he put on a skull cap? Who is he trying to hide from? He's going to murder his wife, but he put on a skull cap. Was that supposed to be a damn disguise? So he put on a skull cap, sweatsuit, Bruno Mogli shoes, 
and then some gloves that were too damn small, then hopped in his Bronco with a knife, sped over there to the wife's ex-wife's house, and then the dog saw him and started barking like crazy, but it's his damn dog. He's the one who bought the dog, so why is the dog barking at him crazy? Because neighbors said they heard the dog barking. OJ bought the dog. That was OJ's dog, basically. So a dog ain't gonna really go crazy for somebody he's he, the dog knows. Yeah? Oh, yeah, somebody mentioned Glenn Rogers. Now, Glenn Rogers was this white man who was doing work on Nicole's house some time earlier before the murders, and Glenn Rogers turned out to be a damn serial killer, and then he said he confessed. But they dismissed that, too. All right? This white man turned out to be a serial killer. But forget about all that. All right, they, they, they said, hey, forget about all that. They said, we're going to put it on OJ. So again, OJ goes over there in the Bronco. And in a 25 minute time span, OJ jumps out, kills Nicole with a knife, slits her throat and damn near decapitates her and then kills Ron Goldman not knowing Ron was going to be there. And Ron Goldman has defense wounds all on his knuckles where he was fighting for his life. And he's a martial artist. So he was fighting the hell out of somebody. So both of them are dead. OJ leaves, gets rid of the bloody clothes, the, the knife and everything, and cleans himself up gets home just in time to finish packing and get in a limo and go to the airport on time. And he did this murder, changing of clothes and getting rid of the murder evidence and turned back up at home like nothing happened in a 25 minute time span. You have to be super Negro to do that. All right. Family, what they don't tell you, there are other witnesses who said at around 1030, because what they're saying, OJ's flight was at 11. So I think he was at the airport at 11. So they're saying that OJ left the house and committed the murders around 1035, 1040, something like that. Here's the problem. There were witnesses who were walking their dogs at night. They were walking the dog around 1030, 1035. They walked past Nicole's condo. They didn't see anything. Everything was cool. They don't tell you that. Family, there's another white woman that they don't tell you about. Let me put this on screen. I'm going to put some receipts on screen. There's another white woman. Hold on. Right here. Let me show you all this. We're going to bring some receipts tonight. This white woman right here. Her name is Marianne Gertrudez. She was an eyewitness. She saw four men running away from Nicole's condominium where they were killed. But the police understood that her testimony would prove that the police actually planted evidence. That's why they don't want to find the real killer. If you find the real killer, that means the LAPD 100% planted the evidence. So they're never going to allow the real killer to come forward. Even a white man who confessed, they dismissed that. Because if somebody comes along and says, hey, I did it, I'm the real killer, that means that the LAPD 100% planted the evidence. So what they did with this woman, because she was going to testify and help OJ, LAPD started putting bogus charges on this woman. They started getting at her and prosecuting her for forged checks she wrote and she, for, she wrote something on a document. She didn't fill out an application. So they did all of these little humbug charges on this woman to discredit her so that she wouldn't be a good witness. All right. This is the stuff they were doing. Oh, a lot of y'all don't know that. A lot of y'all don't know 
some of Ron and Nicole's friends were getting killed around the same time in the same way. It was another friend that they had, a dude named Brett Cantor, who was friends with Ron and Nicole. He got killed the same way. They sliced his neck, almost decapitated him. Ron Goldman worked at the Mezzaluna restaurant. One of his other co-workers got killed, a dude named Michael Nigg. Another waiter from that restaurant, I forgot his name, his car got blown up. They're not telling you this stuff, family. These people who were around Ron and Nicole, a lot of them were getting killed because they were mixed up into that drug scene. They were mixed up into the drug scene. Here's the thing. The thing is, Nicole and all of her friends, they were known around Brentwood for partying, snorting coke, laying up with every damn body, juggling dudes. They were known for being flips and run-throughs. They were getting ran through by white mobsters and gangsters all through Brentwood. Nicole and her friends, she had a homegirl with her, a white girl named Faye Resnick who actually lived with Nicole. Faye Resnick, right before Nicole got killed, Faye Resnick checked herself into a rehab because she was so coked out. Some people said she knew some shit was going to go down, so she went to rehab to hide. The word was that Nicole and Faye kept racking up these drug debts that they owed like 50K, 100K. And at one point, they got OJ to pay off these gangsters for their drug debt. Then they racked up another drug debt and OJ didn't want to pay at this time. So they went and got, you know, they went and made an example out of them. This is what the narrative is, that this was a drug debt. And I want y'all to understand in the 90s, in the 80s and 90s, family, listen to me. In the 80s and 90s, folks didn't play about they dope back then. In the 80s and 90s, folks didn't mess around with they dope, man. They didn't give a damn if you were a celebrity or a relative of a celebrity. If you owe somebody some money for dope, you better pay up or you're going to get snatched up. That happened to Bobby Brown. Remember? What was that? Um, um, what was the guy in New York who him Bobby Brown up? Was it Preacher? What was the guy's name? All my New York guys. What was the guy's name in New York? They kidnapped Bobby Brown in New York. What was the dude's name who got Bobby Brown, guys? My New York guys, if you grew up in the 80s, you know who the guy is. They snatched Bobby Brown up and Whitney had to come through with a brown paper bag to get um, Bobby up out of the clutches. What was um, the dude's name who got Bobby? And Whitney, yeah, was it Preacher? That's what I thought. It was Preacher who got him. Right. Preacher got Bobby. They, they didn't, dudes were not playing about the dope game back there, man. It was dead ass serious. You would get snatched up. You owe somebody some money, they getting at that ass, man. Did that happen to Rick James too? I, I heard, yeah, I heard they got Rick James. Yeah, I heard they got Rick James too. They were snatching niggas up, man. If you owed some money for some dope, you get you gonna get hemmed up. Yeah, it was Preacher. You never heard that about Bobby Brown? Yeah, man. Yeah, a, a, a drug dealer named Preacher kidnapped Bobby Brown and Whitney Houston had to personally come through with a bag to get Bobby Brown up out of there. Wasn't nobody playing like that back in the 90s. So it, it's not far-fetched to understand that these, these white women would get that damn work. You owe some money, you ain't giving up that bread they're going to come make an example out of you. And that's what people said happened. It, it, it clearly was multiple killers. OJ couldn't do that by himself. You understand? And the thing is, with OJ, he probably knew the killers and they said, hey, man, you better not say nothing. You better not put our name in it because we know where your kids go to school. I think they pulled that kind of move on OJ. Like, hey man, don't 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 say our name because your kids are still out here and we know where they at. So don't say our name, bro. You know what it is. 
You know? So the thing is, with the OJ situation, it looked like a drug debt. The way they murdered them. And the police knew, but a story about them getting hit over a drug debt, that would fizzle out in a week. Yeah? The story of them getting killed in a drug debt, that would fizzle out in one week. But saying that OJ did it because he was a jealous big brute, they can milk millions of dollars out of that, and that's exactly what they did. They've been milking that thing for the last 30 years. Yeah? Somebody said they tried to kidnap Marion Barry in the 80s. I believe that. Yeah, wasn't nobody playing back then about that dope money, man. That dope game, wasn't, it wasn't a joke in the 80s and 90s, man. You get hemmed up real fast. They make an example out of you. Yeah? They make an example out of you for real. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. It wasn't OJ's son. I don't believe that. No, I don't believe that bullshit about OJ's son. No, I don't believe that. So with the OJ case, this evidence gets planted. Um, when OJ comes back from Chicago, he immediately comes back and, you know, he gives um, an interview to the police. They took pictures of OJ's body. OJ didn't have a scratch on his body. Now, he cut his finger in Chicago with a glass, and that was verified. But O.J. Simpson didn't have any scratches on his body, didn't have any bruises on his body. Now, some um, Ron Goldman fought back. Ron Goldman was punching some damn body. But O.J. didn't have any bruises on his back or on his face. They searched the inside of O.J.'s mouth. O.J. didn't have any bruises nowhere. You know and let me let me show y'all because I've been talking about this case for years. I've been talking about this case for years. This is OJ right here. They took pictures of his body, his face. This is what OJ's body looked like. This is not the body of somebody who brutally killed two people and one person is fighting for their life. That's not the body of a person who just killed two people. All right. So the white media is not going to tell you all this stuff. See, that's why the grassroots media is very important, ladies and gentlemen. That's why we're very important over here with what we do to bring you all sides of it so that you can see the truth for yourself. And my brother OJ got Johnny Cochran. Johnny Cochran was not a joke. Now, OJ, he voluntarily gave uh, blood samples. So when he gave these blood samples... Instead of putting the blood samples in the lab, Mark Furman and these people, all of these cops are driving around with the blood in their trunk of the car. Family, and anybody who works in medical, where are my people who work in medical? Family, do you know how much of a damn no-no that is? Family, if you get somebody's blood, you tape that up and you put it in a lab immediately. These people were, Mark Furman had it in his car, then I think Tom Lang, another cop, had it in his car. Then they drove it out to Simi Valley where one of the cops lived. So the blood was traveling all over the place. These people were driving all over L.A. with O.J.'s blood. My medical people, y'all know good and well that's a damn no-no. You don't do that nowhere. You don't do that nowhere. You got to put that in a lab ASAP. In fact, you're supposed to get it done in a lab and it doesn't leave the lab. Blood has to be stored immediately. And this was beyond reasonable doubt. Of course it was reasonable doubt. Don't let people shame you. Man, that man shouldn't have never been charged. They were driving around with OJ's blood and then, all, then here's the kicker. For those who remember the case, some of the blood in the vial ended up missing. They wrote down a certain um, um, percentage of blood that they got. And then when they saw the vial, some of that blood was missing. 
And then it just magically turned up on little clothes here and there when they went to investigate OJ's house. Now little blood drops are just popping up like, oh, look at this blood on a sock. Oh, my God. It ain't. So the blood that they got, some of it was missing. They don't tell you all of that. And then they were doing the blood samples of OJ's blood that they quote unquote found in all of these places. And they found out that the blood had EDTA in it, which means that it came from a vial. That means that it came from somewhere that it was stored. Your body don't have no damn EDTA in it like that. So when they did samples of so OJ's blood that they found in all these different places, they're like, oh, this blood has EDTA in it. It has a chemical in it that you only get when you store blood somewhere. The blood was tainted. Johnny and those guys had all types of experts showing this stuff and, and just smashing their narrative. The blood was planted. And family, the kicker is when they got racist Ron, not Ron, when they got um, Mark Furman on the stand and asked him because they found out he was using the N-word and talking about setting black folks up and doing all this stuff. When they got him on the stand and asked him if he planted evidence. Don't, don't ever let them forget what he said. Hold on. This is what Mark Furman, the white supremacist, when he got on stand, and they asked, they asked him, him, did he plan evidence? This is what he said. Hold on. This was a damn yes or no question. Uh, I only have one other question. What was that, Mr. Uh, Detective Furman, did you plant or manufacture any evidence in this case? I assert my Fifth Amendment privilege. Mm. One, one, one more question. time. What was that, Mr. Uh, Detective Furman, did you plant or manufacture any evidence in this case? I assert my Fifth Amendment privilege. Ah. I only have one other question. Boom. Man, man, man. So they like to, to act like Mark Furman didn't exist. They try to sweep Mark Furman under the rug. Case closed right there. That sealed it up right there. That's a yes or no damn question. Man, did you plant this evidence? I plead the fifth. Not damn guilty then. Where are the Sambos in here talking about, oh, they did it in here. Where are you Sambos at? Don't know what the hell you talking about. But we've been studying this case for 30 years. Well, we know we've been around this case. We know the, the deal with this. We know the deal with this case. And let me shout out to Judge Joe Brown. He was um, talking to Jesse Lee Peterson and Judge Joe Brown was talking about the case too. Let me play a clip of Judge Joe Brown talking about it. Because Judge Joe Brown was bringing some more receipts about this case. Oh, where's that Judge Joe? Here we go. Um, Judge Joe Brown was chopping it up with Jesse Lee, <laughs> Jesse Lee Peterson. But look, this is Judge Joe Brown breaking down some more game about this case. Because Judge Joe Brown was, was around at that time. Here we go. No, I looked. Did O.J. Simpson get away with murder? No, I looked at all the evidence they had and talked to the experts. They never should have brought the charge against him. And four of the chief detectives that were involved in that OJ case wound up doing time in California for planning evidence. And right. as a matter of fact, if you saw the entire trial, there are several instances where evidence was planted and it's recorded on tape. <clears throat> the main reason the American public thinks she got away with something is because there was a sleaze known as Nancy Grace who's still around. Right. And that was her first reporting thing. And she hyped that and put a lot of falsity out there and the American public believed it because that was the only person they were here. Right. True I point. saw the entirety of the evidence. Nicole and Rod Goldman got their throat slit from ear to ear. Their tongues pulled out of the slit with a pair of pliers. The fatal injury was a stab by a left-handed person. O.J. was right-handed. What the? It went in and it did that damage. There were no peripheral strikes. The footprints in the blood showed that somebody with a size nine shoe, nine and a half shoe, and somebody with a size nine and somebody with a ten and a half 
were there on the scene and did it. One of my late brothers actually was the expert the state was going to call until he refuted it. The glove man I know personally, the name is Richard Zuckerwar. He took a tracing of everybody's hand. It was a size large glove that fit Furman. And OJ had a 2XL, which was way too big. Johnny Cochran knew that. So if it does not fit, you must acquit. And you can see Furman actually plant the bloody socks on a video that the jury saw that Nancy Grace refused to talk about. The DNA evidence that condemned them, she said, if you saw what went on, and I recorded all of it and looked at it, the expert said, this doesn't exclude 96,000 people in the LA area. And the person that donated this is from the Northeast Mediterranean or oh, from Sicily. I got it. Got- okay. So, yeah, Judge Joe Brown was bringing the receipts. Judge Joe Brown was bringing the receipts. Heavy. The gloves didn't fit. Them gloves didn't fit. And Johnny knew those gloves weren't OJs. And Johnny baited them. He baited Darden into having OJ try them gloves on. Johnny knew them gloves didn't fit. He knew the gloves were too small. When OJ put them gloves on and the gloves didn't fit, boy, the white supremacists were splaining. Boy, they started to, they were coming up with every damn excuse imaginable for them gloves to not fit. They said the gloves shrank in the blood, which is cap. That's cap. They said OJ was faking it. You can't fake a bad fit. Those gloves were way too small for OJ's hand. The gloves were way too small for OJ's hand. Everybody and their mama can see those gloves were too small. Those were Mark's gloves. Most likely those were Mark Furman's gloves that he threw down there and tried to put him on OJ. Then, and then people were like, well, OJ had arthritis and he didn't take his arthritis medicine and his hands grew bigger. And that's why the gloves didn't fit because he was he couldn't get access to his arthritis medicine. They tried to use the arthritis hand thing. Okay, well, if that's the case, if his arthritis was so damn bad, he couldn't have killed nobody if his arthritis was that bad, right? You can't be out there with a knife if your hands are that janky. Your hands and legs are janky because arthritis is all over your body and OJ's knees were all toe up. So OJ kind of had a little casual limp. OJ wasn't a fast, spry guy. He did have arthritis, so he couldn't have committed them damn murders. You're trying to say that this man did all of this with arthritis and killed two people in a 25-minute time span? So, yeah, if you want to go with the arthritis thing, that arthritis thing kills your whole argument then. If y'all want to say his arthritis was that severe, that kills the whole argument then. Right? With bad knees. Yeah, they're trying to make it seem like OJ was in his damn prime. OJ was, you know, older and beat up at that time. Kind of moping around you think it was some people who killed them who were seasoned they knew what the hell they were doing they knew what they were doing you think so OJ wasn't doing all that stuff man so the thing is and then they start talking about what OJ ran he was in the Bronco oh god he was running if he wasn't If he was innocent, he wouldn't have ran. OJ wasn't running nowhere. Where was he running to? Where was OJ running to? Where was he going? And what's funny, I was talking to a suspected white supremacist on my Twitter space live last night about the OJ thing, right before we heard about OJ dying. Where was OJ going in the Bronco? OJ wasn't running. It was a slow speed chase. They were going like 30 miles per hour. If you let the white supremacist tell it, They were speeding through LA in lightning speed. They weren't. They were going north on the 405 freeway. Where the hell are you gonna escape going north on the 405 at 30 miles per hour? Where the hell are you supposed to be going? There was no high speed chase. He wasn't trying to escape. Where? 
Bakersville, where the hell was he gonna go north on the damn freeway? For those who don't know, the 405 North, it goes away from Mexico. Cause they were trying to say he was trying to go to Mexico, which is south, but he was going north on the 405. So all of these lies that they were throwing out there, they just kept repeating these lies over and over and over again. And nobody got to hear the other side of the story. OJ didn't kill no damn body. OJ didn't kill nobody, ladies and gentlemen. And OJ, man, OJ was a symbol because they wanted to use OJ as a proxy for all of us, and it failed. It failed tremendously. White supremacists, they, they, white supremacy took a major L with OJ. They took a major, major L. And I saw something on CNN and look at this narrative that they're trying to push. They're trying to push this narrative that black folks basically want to get away with revenge and, and be like the white supremacists to a certain degree. Look, listen to this narrative. Listen to this bogus narrative that they're trying to say. Uh, hold on one second. Y'all bear with me for a second. Y'all bear with me. I'm going to try to get my camera back on, by the way. Hold on one second. Where my shit at? Hold on. Hold on one second. Bear with me one second. Uh, I'm going to try to get my camera popping again. But hold on. Look at this real quick. Hold on. Um, now listen to what this woman yes, says. Yeah. Hold, hold on. And it's also just worth noting how much is, was impacted by this trial, Jake. Uh, so many things happened. We saw policing changing here in the city. And it's also worth noting, because of that unrest, that racial unrest in the 90s, that is why so many people who may not have been invested in O.J. Simpson were just happy to see that someone who was rich and famous and black could get away with the, what other people did in the system as well, too. Stephanie Elam, thanks so much. And it's also just worth noting how much is, was impacted by this trial, Jake. Uh, so many things happened. We saw policing changing here in the city. And it's also worth noting, because of that unrest, that racial unrest in the 90s, that is why so many people who may not have been invested in O.J. Simpson were just happy to see that someone who was rich and famous and black could get away with the, what other people did in the system as well, too. Okay, what kind of janky job narrative is that? Is that? So, no. There we go, I'm back. I'm back. What a janky job narrative is that? Oh, let me get my camera together. All right, I'm back. That's a janky job narrative to put out there. And, and, and this woman, who is this woman? This woman's forehead. Lord, ma'am, whoever you are, have your stylist give you some bangs. Ma'am, you look like Harry Belafonte about your head. This woman needs some bangs. But yeah, her... Her white bosses told her to put that nonsense out there. That don't make no sense. Her white bosses told her to put that out there like that. That don't make no sense, ladies and gentlemen. That don't make no sense. We we didn't feel like that. Yeah, we, we didn't want to be like the white supremacists, basically. If they get off, we want to get off. No, we wanted some real justice. We wanted the case to be about justice. We just didn't want to see a black person be railroaded, which is what they were trying to do. They were trying to railroad OJ. And the streets was like, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to have a fair trial. Now, if you put some evidence out here that he harmed somebody, well, he should be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. But don't you put somebody on here who's a damn open white supremacist who's bragging about planting evidence on people and calling people the N-word and he's the lead detective and there's all of this shady ass evidence out here that's clearly been planted. We're not going for that either. Y'all better do the right thing. So we were demanding justice out here and justice is what we got. And they've been salty and mad at OJ ever since. And OJ's been winning. Then they tried to, you know, later on, they tried to, they put him in jail for almost a decade for taking his stuff back, but he survived that got back out, shook it off, all right? He got paroled. You know, white supremacy showing how desperate they are to, to get him, to get revenge on him. 
And you know, then earlier they had the civil trial and they try to say, well, he was guilty because of the civil trial. No, 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 he's not guilty of no damn murder. Um, just because somebody finds you civilly liable, liable, that don't mean anything because if somebody gets on your yard or gets on your property and gets hurt, you might be liable for that. That doesn't mean you hurt them. So the white media is they're trying to find a way to use that civil case as their slam dunk to call him a murderer. But they know that it don't work like that. It doesn't work like that. And the Majora spirit protected OJ from that stuff. Because um, even with that judgment, I think they had a $33 million judgment on him in that civil case. And um, Goldman's family didn't get none of it, really. They didn't get none of that. OJ had an NFL pension that couldn't be touched. So my man protected his money. He didn't get finessed out of his paper. You dig? And then to rub it in their faces, you know, they were like they wanted to mess with his money and then give him some book deals to write books like If I Did It. And he like, yeah, shit, I, if you're going to give me some money to sit up here and lie, yeah, y'all messing with my paper, give me the money. I'll write a book lying, talking about if I did it. And then they tried to run around, oops, see, here's a confession. That didn't work either. All of that stuff, the white supremacists were getting desperate, and OJ was finessing their asses out of money as he should. Shout out to OJ. I know I'm trending. I know I'm trending on Twitter. The white supremacists has been all in my mentions, whining and trying to explain because we're not letting them get away with lies. This is not the 90s where the white media can sit up there and have a one-sided slant and then just tell lies all day. You all are going to get all sides of this so you can decide on your own what the business is. You're going to get all sides. You're going to hear about people you haven't heard about. I just told y'all. Yeah. Yeah, and the Goldman family, there's some suspected racists too. I, they, I, I ain't caping for them at all. The Goldman family, they're funny style. Remember, um, the Goldman family, um, they were sitting up here co-signing Zimmerman after he killed Trayvon Martin. Remember, some of y'all don't remember that. They were sitting here co-signing Zimmerman, talking about that was the correct verdict after he killed that little boy. I ain't got no love for, for the Goldman family. None. Not only, I never liked them. Even during the case in the 90s, boy, Ron Goldman was, was so damn, he was trying his damnness to hide his racism. Boy, but he lost it. He lost his damn temper. I, I need to find that clip because I always talk about that clip of Ron Goldman when he saw, not Ron Goldman, Fred Goldman. That was the dad. The dad, Fred Goldman. Because Johnny Cochran, hold on. Let me see some. Hold on. Fred Goldman, um, hold on. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, where's, I, I wish I could find that clip. Um, oh, I think this might be it. I think this might be it. I definitely hold on, let me, hold on. I think this might be it. Um, let me see if this is it. Where he was up, Fred Goldman was mad because Johnny Cochran, because Johnny was getting a lot of death threats because he was giving them white supremacists the business. He was giving the white supremacists the business, so Johnny Cochran started showing up with the Nation of Islam. He had them FOIs, and you know them FOIs ain't no damn joke. And boy, they lost their mind. I wonder if this is the clip. Let me play this. I haven't seen this. I'm trying to find the clip. Hold on, this is a press conference of Fred Goldman. Goldman. Hold on, let me see what this is, hold on. Always seems strange to refer to the same direction since the weapon in the hand tends to be or killed. Nicole Brown on. on this trial. It is overwhelming. We're butchered hold on. by their client. Do any of you believe otherwise? You have seen the evidence in this trial. It is overwhelming. How dare they take the position that all they want to do is prove perjury. They are liars. I wanted to discuss with the oh. with issues that don't relate to this trial. Oh, man. Where's the, I, I'm, I'm trying to, okay. And look, look, this man's, if, if your, your son got killed, I, I get that. 
But yeah, I mean, that family has done too, too much funny style shit for me. Okay, sorry about that, guys. Yeah, if you, you know, look, I, that's your son, I get it. Uh, hey, I would feel a certain way if my son, something happened to one of my sons or whatever. But this dude, um, he was saying a lot of low-key little racist shit, man. I'm trying to find, when they was bored, when they had the, the Nation of Islam, when they had the FOIs, I can't, I, I can't find the clip. I got to dig for it. But boy, boy, when, when he had, when, when Johnny had them FOIs, Fred Goldman was losing it. You came out of here with the people with Farrakhan? This is sick. Farrakhan? <laughs> oh, God. When they say Farrakhan, oh, they can't hold. He was so mad. You come out here with the, these people down with Farrakhan. Oh, God. Oh, he was losing it. Oh, he was so damn tight. Johnny was killing their ass with it. Johnny was 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 giving these people heart attacks, man. Ba family, family, family. We we. Oh God, I, some of y'all just don't understand how thorough Johnny Cochran was. Family, Johnny Cochran was such a rider. Johnny Cochran gave these folks the damn blues. Johnny Cochran was beating the brakes off these folks intellectually. Oh my God, Johnny Cochran was killing the game. Man, that was the last of the Mohicans, man. We need another Johnny Cochran. We don't have it, man. We need another Johnny Cochran so badly, man. We need another Johnny. I, man, please, if somebody can find that video of him yelling about Farrakhan. <laughs> If somebody can find that video, I remember it so clear back then. He was so tight. Man, the white media didn't know what to do. They were pissed when Johnny showed up with them FOIs. Johnny was like, y'all ain't about to do nothing to me out here. Man, it and the streets was bubbling too. The streets was out there circling the wagon. We were the streets weren't gonna let nothing happen to nobody up there, dude. Yeah, this trial put court TV on the map. This trial put court TV on the map, man. But man, y'all gotta go watch some um go watch trial footage and how Johnny Cochran, his closing arguments, master class, that should be taught in law schools. Johnny Cochran masterfully argued that case, made it make sense. Johnny Cochran was not playing. You think? And again, OJ, rightfully so, found innocent. That man didn't kill nobody. They tried to frame him and it didn't work. And luckily he had the resource to, resources to get a thorough team to make sure he didn't get railroaded. And these people are still tight about that to this day. So you better understand all the details. I might have to do an OJ documentary really telling the truth about what really, really happened. That might have to be a project that I do. It ain't. That might be something we have to do. But OJ was 100% innocent, man. Now, was, was OJ coon in a little bit? Yeah, yeah, OJ had a little coon train in him. But he's still innocent, though. That doesn't negate the fact that he was innocent. Still innocent. Oh, they didn't kill no damn body. And, and thankfully, we had Johnny Cochran around to make sure he didn't get railroaded. So RIP to OJ and Johnny Cochran and, to, and respect to, to real justice and law and order. And again, nobody deserves to get harmed. That's unfortunate what happened to Nicole and Ron. That's very unfortunate. But if the LAPD weren't trying to make a damn come up, they were trying to come up, family, and it backfired. They knew it was some damn white mafia people involved. They knew, but that, that, that's not where the money was. They, if they pinned it on OJ, that was going to be their come up. Everybody was going to come up off that. They were going to use that as a stepping stone to their career. 
everybody was going to eat off that for the rest of their lives and the shit backfired on them. It backfired. You understand? And people, are, man, look, people still have careers because of that today. The Kardashians, that's what the Kardashians are known for. Um, Rob Kardashian was OJ's friend. OJ was clicked in with the Kardashian family. Some people say he smashed the, the mom. Some people say he smashed that mom. And speaking of the Kardashians, did y'all see what Caitlyn tweeted earlier? Did y'all see that? Hold on. Where we at? Where we at? Hold on. Let me show y'all what Caitlyn, quote unquote, tweeted earlier. Hold on. Hold on. Let me find that real quick. Y'all bear with me one second. Yeah. Oh, Caitlyn Jenner tried to get in on the the dumping. This is what Caitlyn tweeted earlier. Look at this. Hold on. Caitlyn. Caitlyn yeah. yeah. Good, good riddance, riddance, OJ, OJ Simpson. Simpson. And, people and people are like, hold, hold on, on, Bruce, Bruce Caitlyn? Caitlyn? You, you actually, actually was in, was an, in accident, an accident, a car, a car accident, accident, when you, when you killed, killed somebody. Killed somebody. People, people are like, wait, wait a minute. minute. You, you killed, killed somebody, somebody Caitlyn? Caitlyn? And didn't, and didn't get, get charged, charged because, because you were a part, part of a fatal, fatal car accident, accident where you allegedly rear-ended re 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 somebody. So, so yeah, yeah, they were they talking, talking about, about charging, charging quote-unquote, quote Caitlin, Caitlin with, with the Hitler manslaughter, manslaughter, but he didn't, didn't get, get charged. charged. So you're so trying, you're trying to, to put your two in there. Like, hey, won't you chill out a little bit? Huh? That's what it is. That is what it is. Hold on, let me, let me fix something. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me fix that up. All right. All right. But yeah, OJ Innocent. Is the echo on my mic? I'm sorry. Sorry about that, guys. Sorry about that. All right, I, I fixed the echo. It's good. I fixed the echo. I had a little good, but yeah, I, I, I fixed the echo. I'm having some technical difficulties tonight, but it's all good. Anyway, man, let me get up out of here, man. Um, look, don't forget, go get your, look, we got an event happening at the Hidden History Museum. We got an event this weekend that's going to be so popping. We got a lot of comics up there. We got Tori Hart. We got Big Ja. We got CP the Comedian. We got um, Dwan B. And we got many, many others that's going to perform this Saturday night, April 13th at the Hidden History Museum. Get your tickets right now. Get your RSVP for this private event at um, hiddenhistorymuseum.com right here. HiddenHistoryMuseum.com is going to be packed, packed, packed. We're going to have a ball this Saturday. Get your tickets right here. And also the Rally for Reparations. Um, that's going down June. So everybody go to RallyForReparations.com and contribute to the Rally for Reparations so, so we can make that happen, ladies and gentlemen. And um, get your deodorant, your root work deodorant at RootWorkStyle.com, ladies and gentlemen. All right, let me get up.